The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour, where it doesn't matter where you're at. You could be standing on your head, hanging off a skyscraper. The only thing that matters is you're here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on? Well, pretty much what I thought uh, was uh, uh, going to happen a little bit yesterday, a little bit more this morning, and that is uh, we've had the big reset that generally comes with fund buying or just before fund buying. Uh, we also have a three-day weekend coming up. Uh, my nephew works on Long Island uh, and uh, can look out the window and see the traffic out to the Hamptons. And so I always uh, tell him to give me a call when it starts getting backed up. Well, it looks like the traffic's uh, fairly decent off to the Hamptons once again. So not surprised that uh, we've got a market that's kind of going sideways. Fun buying, as we said before, isn't uh, is more of uh, what is that uh, that's saying out there? Uh, it's more of a suggestion. The code is more of a code. Guidelines, the natural rules. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's more of a suggestion than a rule. Uh, nobody I know has ever gone to jail or even been fined for not living up to the charter. Generally, the reason to live up to the charter uh, is that if you don't, then the fund managers won't use you and buy your funds. Uh, of course, uh, there's fund managers and money managers, and the money managers take the cash and then they buy the funds. And depending on how they feel, they hedge those funds on the opposite side. So there's kind of this dance of uh, all this 401k money coming in. Uh, then it's getting hedged uh, either a little or a lot, depending on market conditions. And, of course, those fund managers then have to actually go out and buy stock. And, of course, since everybody knows approximately when they're going to buy stock, uh, as soon as they start buying it, everybody on the street just starts uh, marking up the prices. And, uh, you know, some people call it uh, putting some lipstick on this pig. Well, let's put some lipstick on this pig. Some people call it other things. But the, the truth of the matter is you're coming into a, a three-day weekend. If you're a fund manager, not a money manager, do you really want to get out in front of this or wait until Tuesday or maybe Tuesday afternoon, probably Wednesday morning? My guess is they'll start marking it up uh, Tuesday morning, maybe mid-afternoon, and then you're going to get whatever is coming in. And even in a down market, They'll find a way to move it up so they can make some money. It's not uncommon for them to shake off and out the weakest hands, especially in the stocks that they think that these fund managers and will be buying. So, you know, they kind of know where all the bodies are buried and what's happening. So um, run people out, get them to, uh, uh, to uh, toss out their shares at the lows and then sell them next Wednesday at uh, a uh, a user markup, a usury markup uh, from the street. Uh, of course, uh, 401k money is, uh, at least the way they think about it on the street, is uh, just uh, schmucks money. And uh, it's uh, their, your money, but uh, they consider it theirs. So don't be surprised that you get uh, in 401ks the worst price generally of the month, not the best. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And what else do we have? <laughs> Schmucks. Uh, 
a technical term? I th- I say so. Uh, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but uh, Nancy asked about, could you talk about Qualcomm Apple lawsuit over those chips? I'm curious as to whether the lawsuit is a real reason Apple's not using 5G modem chips or something else. Also, where will, uh, will Apple have those 5G chips manufactured? Uh, depending on what's going on. Uh, this has been an ongoing thing. Uh, Qualcomm and Apple have been in litigation off and on. Uh, and they kind of go to their own corners for a while, and then they come back and fight. Um, Qualcomm has basically a monopoly. They've done that by hiring the best and the brightest out of engineering schools, especially in the radio frequency domain. And they keep those folks there and make sure that they don't want to go anywhere else. Uh, you always uh, see a lot of people leaving one company going to another uh, where digital isn't a whole lot of difference. Uh, we talked a little bit about um, Dale Earnhardt and how he could kind of just see the wind on restrictor plate races when he was racing cars and uh, was able to, to uh, side draft. He really understood uh, the effect of air on the car and how to set it up, a lot of that. And there probably isn't a computer or a uh, circular slide rule. Some people use long ones. Uh, or a calculator or a spreadsheet anywhere that can put all that stuff uh, in. A lot of it is just feel. And we called it the black arts yesterday, but I, it's always called the black arts in design and chip design. And Qualcomm has done the work. They have about a billion, um, man, if I, if, I, if, I, if I say a billion, it's probably low on patents on everything. But, of course, especially on the RF circuits that they use since it is radio frequencies. And there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on. It's kind of like quantum computing or quantum physics. Uh, digital circuits... Yeah, you can have a fairly average guy design one, and they'll probably work. You'll be better off with a smarter guy. But with the RF circuits, you, you don't have the best and the brightest. You probably have something that works fairly poorly. And uh, the, the history of RF design has been that, uh, building something that works well, fairly inexpensively, and it's all – little ideas that kind of add up over time. But, you know, if you just got out of college and you went to work for Qualcomm and they kind of thought you were kind of bright, um, they'll mentor you along and there'll be somebody that's got 30 or 40 years of RF experience. And, yeah, you'll think you're all good and smart and neat and all that. But uh, you know what? It only, you know, they'll keep those folks on to see whether they have the aptitude for it. And they'll groom them and move them on uh, long term. But that's the way you build these kind of companies with a deep uh, technical insight and keep your employees happy. But uh, why didn't Apple want to get along with Qualcomm? Qualcomm has monopoly and they want to charge for it. Apple thinks, kind of like Walmart sometimes with its vendors, that, uh, you know, you're doing business with this. You should just give it to us at cost. There is a kind of a real idea. Apple put out a business mini that helped. We'll be back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. So, at the top of the show, I talked about. Uh, the B team or the C team being in for the people, but it looks like they're uh, headed out. So I don't think you're probably going to get a lot of action the next couple of days. I think uh, these guys have had a tough year already, and they're already off to the Hamptons uh, and uh, trying to enjoy life before things probably get a little tougher on them. But uh, we're up to seven points on the S&P cash, up about 15 on the NASDAQ. Uh 180 on the Dow. That's not a big deal. Crude oil's down a little. Um, could have a, a big uh, news tomorrow uh, in crude uh, somewhere in the after 10 o'clock hour on legal action. So take a look at that and see whether or not uh, or keep an eye on it. Let me put it tomorrow. Uh, gold's down about a dollar. Not a big deal going on there. Crude uh, Silver's off about seven cents. And uh, it's nothing but history repeating. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 2007, nearly six months after it was actually introduced, Apple's highly anticipated iPhone goes on sale, generally downplayed by old world, should probably be old world, old, old word, technology, old word, technology pundits after its introduction. The iPhone was greeted by long lines of buyers around the country on that first day, quickly becoming an overnight phenomenon. One million phones were sold in only 74 days. Certainly, there was a lot of action on it. Um, many people do not know that those long lines were being paid for by Apple. Um, I bumped into more than a couple of people. Uh, you know, he... Steve Jobs learned a lot from Elvis's, uh, what was the guy, Colonel Parker, um, about uh, making stuff look good. He was, uh, you know, he was always one to, to uh, gild the lily, as it would be. But, uh, you know, anything that you see from Apple, maybe not as much as it used to be uh, with Steve Jobs. But, uh, you know, you got to think, this phone's been on sale for... 15 years now. 
and really only about five and a half or six years um, was uh, Steve Jobs alive. Uh, and uh, the rest of the time, uh, if you really come up with any kind of product that was really huge for Apple, I, I'm going to say the phone is 90% of their business. Uh, they've been, it came down a little bit. They've been able uh, to keep margins up by selling the AirBuds, uh, which is, uh, you know, I, I wrote probably five years ago before maybe a year before the AirBuds came out that uh, they were really looking at turning this into a razor blade, uh, a razor, razor blade kind of business uh, as uh, newer stuff became harder and harder to get to. Um, but uh, with the exception of really the earbuds, uh, they still have uh, uh, about 90% of the profit really coming from one product, and that's the iPhone and the earbuds together. But uh, certainly a, a good one-two punch. Uh, the, I think the margin on those things, I think it cost about 25 bucks to build. And they sell. Uh, they get Apple. I think gets on average two hundred bucks uh, from them. Uh, so uh, you know, you you make something for uh, twenty five bucks and sell it for two hundred bucks. Uh, you're doing well, but uh, you always wonder when that uh, the end of the road's going to be if they don't come out with some kind of new technology that blows people away. Um, of course, uh, really two management styles. One was the bomb thrower, the the radical, uh, the uh, the I'm going to change the world with Steve Jobs, and then, of course the current CEO, who's more about managing stuff and making sure everything ships on time, and uh, more of the mature market guy. He really hadn't done a whole lot other than being a really good manager. Probably would have been a good manager of uh, a grocery store or literally anything else. He doesn't have a lot of chops when it comes to technology or a cache or anything close to the cache that Steve Jobs did on being the showman. Uh, but he's been a good caretaker for the business. But uh, you wonder when that uh, when that rolls out and whether or not they're stagnating somewhat. On this day in 2007, 15 years ago, uh, you actually could buy an iPhone and be absolutely obnoxious about telling everybody you had one. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com, and we'll get to those emails already. Um, see, can you please explain why Google isn't doing better? I would think so many people using a search engine, YouTube, and other things. Uh, there's a handful of reasons. Uh, let's pull up a chart here. Uh, and I brought them up over the last year, year and a half. Actually been talking about it for probably a year before or maybe even two years before. And that is these guys just get fined on a daily basis by the rest of the world. Uh, they continue to um, do things and get their hands caught in the cookie jar and the fines just get bigger and the laws get tougher and, you know, there just isn't a whole lot to say other than, uh, you know, when nothing's going on and you're a brand new industry, there isn't a lot of oversight and you can throw a lot of money around. Uh, you can get your way for a while. But, uh, you know, that only works here in the United States where they can buy the congressmen and senators. Uh, much tougher to do that overseas uh, where they have people that compete against us in technology uh, or software or a lot of other things. And uh, getting right uh, patri uh, patriarchal, I think so. That'd be the good word to use there. But certainly Europe, China, a lot of these other places have a lot of restrictions on them and have uh, uh, kind of like uh, Facebook uh, a la Metamucil now. Uh, to, to, uh, what is that? M uh, matter. Um, these things have kind of fallen off a cliff. 
uh, again, uh, a lot of the ad revenue that uh, Google has is kind of like Metamucil, and that is that it's probably highly exaggerated, and they charge uh, good amounts already, and then probably how many people actually watch them, how um, responsive are they. Uh, but uh, for Google, regulatory issues are a big uh, a big deal. Now they've got their uh, uh, guy, Mr. Smith, uh, has gone to Washington, but uh, that's probably not going to do him any good because he's done everything he could uh, to poke his finger in the eyes of the out of the power party, which will probably be the in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, power. Party. Party coming up fairly soon. We'll be if you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. as we return out here I had something out here oh yeah a uh, question about Tesla and uh, them um, uh, moving some of the uh, folks out uh, that were uh, involved in uh, getting test data uh, for uh, its robo cars look no hands and no driver for that matter Scientists assure us that it's the shape of things to come in highway travel. It's all done by computerized electronic impulses relayed to the car through a special receiving unit fixed to the front. Signals picked up from the inlaid track are interpreted by the unit to change the car's course or its speed. It may seem a bit of a pipe dream at the moment, but researchers say that robot cars may well be in everyday use within 30 years. <laughs> that was uh, 1960 or 65. Anyway, I'll 
think that that's easy. Do we have a caller? Yep. Okay, Jeff and Philly, how you doing today? <clears throat> doing well. How about you? Great. Great. Um, so I have a question for you. Uh, it'll take me a minute to explain the question. So I have this trade that I do that I figured out how to do on certain uh, news uh, releases. And the uh, sometimes my orders get filled and sometimes the price action moves in response to the news so quickly that it blows right past my limit before the order can get filled. But uh, they used to get filled a lot more frequently, like maybe a year and a half or so ago. So uh, my brokers, uh, interactive brokers, and I've called them a few times trying to see what I can do to have a you know, greater likelihood that my order will get filled. And I asked them, you know, is it a priority because of the size of my account or whatever? And they're like, no, no, no. And they also said uh, that the, type, you know, it's a, a simple limit order and that that actually uh, gets transmitted to the clearinghouse because the clearinghouse um, has well, they can handle that type of order, so it actually transmits my order limit order transmits from uh, interactive brokers to uh, the exchange and sits on their server, you know, until the news is released and, and it hits my uh, limit order. So, which is a, it's a stop order, right? So if the when the price moves. It hits my stop, which triggers it, but then I have a limit on it <clears throat> that, you know, if it blows by too fast, it doesn't fill. So, anyway, I've called Interactive Brokers a few times and asked them, you know, can I pay extra? Because there's a lot of trades that I make good money on that I'm not getting filled on. <clears throat> but there is nothing that apparently they can do. So, my question is, is there some kind of, uh, well, do you have any advice in general? <clears throat> and I'm thinking possibly well, you might well, say well, one, open up your own. Oh, yeah, your now, there, there's a couple things you can do. First of all is that um, the, the reason that you have that issue is a thing called quote stuffing. That is the ability to tie the machines up by add, uh, putting in a bunch of bids and asks that will never ever uh, get a, uh, get uh uh, exercised, right? And they do that, especially when news is pending or it's coming out. Um, there is one company that is uh, uh, trying hey, can to... I, can, I interrupt, uh, can I interrupt for a second? When you say they are stuffing orders, who is they? Are they uh, high-frequency high frequency traders? traders. High-frequency traders. They put... Okay. They just... They just shove in as many orders as they can and try to uh, to literally slow down the computers, right? And slow down your order, slow down all your brother orders, uh, all the retail traders, and then that's it. But that's been going on since, well, the law has really changed in 2007 and it just gotten worse. There is a exchange called IEX. Yeah, I heard about that. That's the guy in Canada, the Asian guy that like figured out what was going on, and he introduced extra fiber to uh, so that all the orders coming in w wouldn't have yeah, an advantage like, by being co-located. Yeah, in like everybody's exchange. his timing delay is a thirty-mile long uh, line of uh, fiber optic cable. So <laughs> right, there's right. there's no way to game <laughs> game that. But uh, yeah, it is kind of interesting. But. There's one where, you know, whatever your order is, uh, but I think even him, uh, even what they do is a quarter of a second. But you may try different things like that. Um, I don't worry about it that much because uh, my trades, if they're going to be big, you know, uh, 10 cents or something isn't, or 15 cents or even 50 cents may not be a big deal. But generally, I, never, I don't have a lot of problems with orders. But I don't trade news. So if you're going to trade news, you're going to have to, you're swimming with the sharks and high frequency traders. And they know when news is coming. They know before you do. And they'll do everything they can 
uh, to make sure that uh, you don't get an even break. Hmm. How does stuffing orders and their benefit them? Because it stops people like you. Right? You put in an order, so they already know what they can do with that order. If you put in a limit that's 50 cents higher, they can jam it up 50 cents and then make sure and make an extra uh, 50 cents. Right? The whole see, thing okay. is yeah. once you put in an, once you put in an order, they already know what's uh, where the bodies are buried. Um, I was talking to a guy uh, in a big uh, database company about an hour ago that uh, right now if you're a uh, – a, a quantum physicist uh, and you uh, graduate with a PhD or even uh, half a PhD right now, you can go to work for any of these high frequency trading firms for a half a million a year. Oh. They're all about trying to figure out uh, what m the most likely thing is and how to uh, jigger it around so they can make money. There's a big business in all of that. But uh, I don't I try think. to get into that fight because I know I'll never win. <laughs> and I guess if they can put a huge uh, percentage of the inbound orders are coming from them, then statistically they'd have a better chance. All they have to do, have you ever slowed down a computer by running too many programs? Uh, sure. That's all they do. And, and, huh. and your, your order gets lost or slowed down, but their computers are very fast, and they'll go around the end, jack up the price, to whatever it is, if you put in a limit order, the chances of you getting any, actually getting anything, um, if it's not a market order, doesn't instantly, uh, and even then, they're gonna, they're you're you're gonna probably pay extra, but those guys are living on a quarter of a cent, maybe a half a cent, uh, to sometimes twenty cents uh, a share, but uh, most of the time, the high frequency guys, they're just trying to make a tenth. Maybe, you know, a quarter uh, of a tenth or something. But in high news, uh, uh, high news, they know a lot of home uh, traders are just going to do it. I want to thank you for the call. Uh, we've got John on the line. Can you hang through uh, through the break, John? Okay. Thanks. Are you there, John? Oh, be back, hopefully, with John from Philly in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are 
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And we're back, and hopefully we've got John from Philadelphia on the line. Good morning. Excuse me. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon. Now, maybe you can remember the guy's name that we had on about quote stuffing from Chicago. He had this Twitter feed. I'm just blanking on his name right now. Um, I know you're, exactly to whom you refer. Like I had you. him on the yeah, I, I had him on the I'm show. I'm drawing a blank on the man's name, <clears throat> and uh, I, in fact, can visualize his face, at least as portrayed in some of his bios. But, um, uh, sorry, I, I can't help you. I, uh, David, I'm calling. Uh, Jeff and I are doing Philadelphia tag team questions for you today. Okay. And, uh, David, uh, I first have to say, uh, one, I've said this before, but uh, I admire your approach and your trading tactics. Um, number two, I highly recommend to anybody who's a trader your services. Um, uh, your your short-term trading services, I uh, uh, one thing I find admirable about is uh, you can just sit and wait and wait and then just act, and when your losses are small, they're pretty damn small, and your losses are good and sometimes very good. Uh, so I recommend uh, that uh, your service to anybody who is a short-term trader, if they care. Um, to that point, uh, David, yesterday you put on the trade a uh, S&P or a SPY put option trade that was nice and successful. Maybe it was an overnight trade. Maybe it was an intraday trade. But um, I wanted to ask you specifically, uh, and I don't ask you to divulge proprietary stuff that you care to uh, uh, keep private, but yesterday, it's either Monday night or Tuesday very early, you saw the set of conditions in which the bounce over the past days uh, could conceivably top out short term and pull back in you know a meaningful way at least on an intraday basis. So you saw that, and in fact turned out just that way. You profited thereby. I'm calling to ask if you can share with us, with me, conceptually what the setup was that saw that uh, that you saw that suggested, hey, not only is this rally topping out very short term, but we could have a, a, a good, meaningful intraday pullback. Um, well, for me, um, there were a couple things. But when I looked at the options, and I actually had it in the newsletter before they opened yesterday, uh, that there was a, uh, a and it, it's kind of been wiped away a little bit. But there were a couple of good uh, hockey stick dog legs in the expiration mile from about 390 to 392. And they got it up to about 392 and a half. 
and there just wasn't any volume at all. I started seeing Nike, um, which really didn't have that great of earnings. Um, they run all the shorts out, and generally, and it gave it up real quick. And that's generally a good sign that you've got kind of a high going on. I was looking for exactly what we had, which is a pullback back close to the low end of 3,800. Just thinking that a lot of people are going to ring the register on whatever uh, the bounce was and go into what we have now, which I suspect is going to be a lot of sideways trading until next week when fun buying comes back in. But uh, probably fairly quiet. But anyway, uh, the downside and the options was in, in the low, uh, about 382 or so. And so I, my trade setup was just that, that I was looking for a move. I thought it'd take two days, maybe three days to get there. But we bought the, uh, I think it was, I put the uh, email out. I don't, you know, there's a little bit of delay from where people get it. But I think I sent it out when it was uh, 392, 392.50. And the uh, SPY 390 call uh, puts for, Friday, we're trading about a buck sixty or seventy or something like that. Um, so that was the setup. Um, but I, you know, I thought it would take maybe a couple of days. It just all happened at once, and I'm half thinking that all the guys were thinking about going to the Hamptons and just didn't care. <laughs> we're getting out. We're going, and that's it. But uh, that's that's it. Uh, I was looking at uh, a couple of big dog legs. They're not as uh, brilliant as they were yesterday, but uh, there was one at uh, 382 and the other one at uh, 392, um, but it was kind of a little mushy up on the top end, uh, but uh, just looking at a couple of things going on, knowing what was going on in here and thinking that they were going to ring the register, but you know it was a fairly low uh, risk trade, I thought, and that, uh, that, you know, at a buck and a half or buck 75 or maybe even two bucks uh, to go to uh, 380 or 382-ish. Uh, we got a little bit farther than I even thought, but uh, and it was a great setup. But I was just looking at the option volatility, um, uh, what they call the smile, uh, on both the money being won and lost. And as you know, I look at these a great deal, but it was very plain yesterday. It wasn't as plain, or it's not as plain today, but there is kind of a nice tick down there at 380. And that's why I went ahead and sold those um, puts yesterday uh, into the close. So, gotcha, gotcha. I, I appreciate that, that. Yeah, I, uh, I, can, uh, I can see clearly your explanation. Why wait uh, till Thursday to uh, eat your cheeseburger on Tuesday? So, um uh, that explains the setup. I appreciate that. Um, we always keep looking for those sorts of things, and I'm going to get better at doing sort of things you do there. But uh, in the meantime, we'll, uh, we'll uh, just suffice in being a customer of yours. Well, thanks, and uh, have a good day. And I'm going to remember you, his name was Mick, Mick something. Mick, 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 Mick. <sighs> it's going to drive me nuts. Uh, Thanks, but Dave. he's the guy, huh? Guy, okay. yeah. I was gonna. I was just trying to remember his name after the conversation in the previous seg segment, just because I want to say McNally, but it, was, it wasn't. It's close to that. But uh, he had a big company, and he figured it all out, and uh, literally embarrassed them until he bought. They bought him out and bought his company out. But he used to be on Twitter pointing out all the shenanigans they did. And they finally green mailed him out. Uh, but part of it was uh, him not uh, making any more posts on Twitter. So haven't heard of him in a long time. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to the break here. We'll see what's going on. I'm Like I said, I think a lot of the uh, action is kind of over for this week. And the thing to start doing now is uh, start looking at uh, how well these companies are holding up uh, into Friday. I think we got a couple of days next week, like I said, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for fun buying. And then maybe if you're real bearish, maybe that's when uh, the next down play goes through. We'll be back in a minute. 
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses, where you can now get up to 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and they never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Tuesday, July 5th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And Jimmy in the Den says the SMH has fallen and it can't get up. I've fallen and I can't get up. Yes. Well, I don't know about that. you do actually looking fairly good here on volume, at least today. And that is uh, June 17th, 2022. Uh, eight and a half million shares at 201. Uh, yeah, so... Hey, three million shares now. You might get a light volume test maybe next week. I think uh, some of this is overblown, but uh, a couple of nice days maybe next week, uh, especially since I've seen so many people uh, throwing spitballs at uh, the SMHs from the uh, cheap seats on CNBC. Make me think that they're thinking about buying it and just driving it down to get a better price, and maybe run some folks out. But that's interesting. Uh, question on Tesla again that I didn't quite get to. Um, they canned a bunch of folks. When you're trading uh, or trading, when you're training uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence systems, there's a lot of work to be done when you get started. But eventually, you get a pretty good data set of all the stuff that you need to know. And the t uh, people that uh, Tesla is 
canning here are all those people that drove the cars around and gained data. But at some point, you're just throwing more um, hay on top of a haystack and you're not putting more needles in it. And uh, it doesn't do you any more good. So I don't think it's a big deal and probably a good thing as they start to cut down on expenses. But uh, not unforeseen. Um, getting uh, a lot of test data. And we'll talk tomorrow about how Google did it. But uh, nothing new out there. A um, little lighter volume than the gap up. But again, I don't think we're going to get a big bounce uh, before Friday. It may just be a slow bleed. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.